Hey guys, what's up? This is Nainia from Tech Solutions and today I have the Dell Inspiron 15Z Ultrabook for review. And I will begin with the design as usual and then we will proceed with the verdict. Dell Inspiron 15Z Ultrabook has a brushed aluminium finish. It weighs 4.76 pounds which is approximately 2.15 kg. On the left hand side, we have a power port, exhaust vents, gigabyte ethernet port, HDMI out port, two USB 3.0 and 2.0 compatible ports which are evenly spaced and a 3.5 mm headphone jack. On the right hand side we have a SD card slot, two USB 3.0 and 2.0 compatible ports and an optical drive. On the front we have got four LEDs. Each LED signifies something. The first LED shows the power whether your computer is on or on sleep or on standby. Currently it is on sleep so it is constantly blinking. Then we have the storage LED. Then we have the battery LED and fourth is the connectivity LED. At the back we have got two speakers one over here and the other one is over here. And we have got some exhaust vents and four rubber pads. That is the exterior of the Dell Inspiron 15Z Ultrabook. Let's go into the interiors. So that's the interior now. So we have got the power button on the top over here and we've got three additional buttons which has some functions which I will be demonstrating later. And then we have a beautiful backlit keyboard. And I personally feel that Dell actually got inspired from the Apple MacBook Pro's design and that's why they have got these evenly spaced keyboard and this particular keyboard Apple actually deployed like five years ago so you can clearly make that out and even the mouse it is pretty much it resembles the Apple keypad on the MacBook Pro's but the only difference is it has got two buttons and it is slightly smaller it supports touch gestures too However, it is not that fluid and responsive like the MacBook Pro, but definitely they have added some features which users will enjoy. Let's move on to the display. The device has a 15.6 inch LED backlit display which is touch sensitive and has a screen resolution of 1366 by 768. This is very average in comparison to the other laptops out there in the market. The color accuracy, contrast, brightness, etc. is average, which makes it really poor display. Even my 4 year old MacBook Pro beats this display. The touch is not that great too. It is handy for Windows 8 gesture based features and for clicking on macro objects. One of the Windows 8 gesture features which can be used through the touch is the swipe feature and you can even search for applications or you can just click on the start menu or wherever you want to and certain applications which may be really awesome to use with the touch will be the maps application, images etc. The device is powered by the third generation Intel Core i7 3537U CPU which is clocked at 2 GHz. 8 GB of DDR3 RAM is also embedded inside the device. A total of 500 GB of storage is provided which is quite less considering the cost is high as well as the requirement of certain users is also very high. Windows 8 is a new operating system from Microsoft which brings in the new modern user interface as well as the old Windows 7 user interface. There are apps specifically built for the modern user interface. Multitasking is different. At first, it may be difficult for the user to get a hang of the operating system, but later it becomes simpler. Applications open really fast and the OS runs fluidly. Along with the software, we have got some additional features from Dell added into the software and these features are some three buttons hardware buttons provide, uh, provided over here 
so I can just click on the first button it opens up settings and these are day to day settings like turning on the Bluetooth turning on the backlit light of the keyboard and uh, so on and so forth the next button enables the Mac Sense settings so basically I can it's got the Mac Sense technology for enhancing the audio quality so I can set the preset to music I can set the preset to let's say voice game etc and then I've got the last button which is one of the best button this is not customized by Dell it allows the user to customize it so let's say I want to I am a music listener so I can just click it and the music app will open or let's say I am an internet user so I'll just click it and Google Chrome will open you can just adjust this settings when you are using it for the first time or go to the control panel and perform the setting change and it's that awesome so these are basically the three additional features on this particular device let's perform the music test on this particular device so let's go to the music application and uh, let's play some music You can see the output is really very good and that's uh, because of the skull candy speakers they have used and the max sense audio technology that they have applied the location of the speakers is perfect for this design as you can see it's located at the bottom and because of the curve it doesn't touch the ground it is slightly above the ground so it reflects from the ground and gives a much louder output which is really awesome So here is a video of nature, it is 1080p and I'm playing it on YouTube so the quality may be slightly deteriorated but you can see it gives a pretty good output but there are certain places where you can easily make out that the display is really average. It is not that great and not that bad, it is intermediate. The HDD performs really good. The read and write speeds are better than the other 5400 RPM HDDs. A maximum read speed of 113.2 megabytes per second and minimum read speed of 45 megabytes per second was obtained. Here are some results of random file reads. It gives us information of number of input output operations per second, average access time, maximum access time and average speed. The speed increases with the increase in file size. Here is a result of known file read where the file size specified is 500 megabytes. The write speeds were close to 83 megabytes per second. USB 3.0 performs slightly below par. I got a maximum of 88 megabytes per second, but I have used other Dell laptops which give speeds as I has 95 megabytes per second. The device has a very good cooling system. The device gets hot only on the top left corner and sometimes on the bottom left corner. The cooling system is very good. I could only observe the device getting hot on one or two occasions. Even on playing high-end games, the device didn't make much noise like MacBook Pro or other laptops and was quite cool. The minimum temperatures were close to 50 degrees Celsius and maximum temperatures were close to 100 degrees Celsius. By looking at the benchmarks, you can easily see that the results are poor. Even the FPS of GPU is less. However, these results are obtained from a really high graphical input with high settings. But at low settings, the performance is average. You get near about 30 frames per second. This will be proved in the upcoming gaming performance where I use native resolution and low settings. All games gave me nearly 30 FPS but Crisis 3 gave me 15 FPS.
sometimes I feel sorry for these bastards. But mostly, I just kill them. is a trade secret handed down from master to apprentice for centuries. You are disguised as a chef. You are allowed everywhere in the ground floor mansion area. Turning on a radio can create a distraction. Ms. Firmwood is in the upstairs shower and will be down shortly. The girl's in her room. Huh? You, go! Yes, this guy. Don't you disguise is blown. Enemies will be looking for a chef. To clear your identity, either eliminate the witnesses or find an alternate disguise. Here they come! Here they come, my brothers! Fight, my brothers! the gaming performance of this particular device you would have observed that this device is capable of playing almost any sort of games and I mean high graphical games that are available in the market however at low settings and at native screen resolution so casual gamers who can compromise on high graphics can buy this device but again you need to go for the top notch model that is the 79,000 model which is a bargain because you're paying so much and you will get to play on low graphics so it's up to you, you need to decide on that. Second, if you are a music lover who likes to go to the internet, browse the internet, use normal applications, day-to-day -day, day -day applications like Microsoft Office, Open Office, etc. Then you can go for a low-end device because it's got a really good music performance and for music lovers, it's going to be an awesome device. But for video lovers, this device is not going to be awesome at all. And if you are a high-end user who likes to do multimedia editing, you can go for a high-end device and it will definitely help you out. Finally, I will give my overall rating that is 3.1 on 5. So that's my review guys. How do you like it? Please tell me in the comment section below. So just please rate, comment, subscribe and visit techbarrick.com and also visit techiesparks.com. So that's it with this video.